So we continue today from verse 10, Vila Kusumanjali, and we continue on page 43 for the translators with the verse to me mora chapa tapa to me mora diana. But I will start with the verse itself. Oh, Goddess, I am a maidservant of your lotus like feet, whose vine like body burns in the forest fire of separation from you. Please revive me at once with your nectarian glances. And now we continue on page forty three. You are my chapa, you are my penance, and you are my meditation. And since I was born, I haven't known anyone but you. Wherever you sport with your lover, and your girlfriends, please take me there also as your maidservant. Thus, the foreign Krishna Das weeps, holding a straw between his teeth and praying. O oh, golden beauty, please fulfill my desires. You are my japa. You are my tapa. You are my vrata. You are my dhyana. You are my life, shortly to say. And someone who has such a feeling established deeply in his heart towards Shimata Radharani. For him it's completely natural to feel burning separation. Because he is so much in love, all his senses, all his senses, all his mind, all his heart is filled with the Radharani's name, form, qualities and pastimes. So as you, we heard, Chakshuji was reading, uh, so many sounds are coming from uh, Munger. Yeah, please, thank you. So we can compare the feelings of person who said, you are my japa, you are my vrata, you are my tapa, you are my dhyana, with the words of Raghunath. And in the words Raghunath is saying, my wine-like body, is burning because I am your maidservant. So please revive me. He is praying. And this, Chakshuji chose this verse 10, but actually this beginning verses from Vilapa Kusumanjali is the prayers 
before direct seva of Raghunath Das Goswami. He is praying for Radharani's mercy. He is praying for Radharani's glances. He is praying to be marked like maidservant of Shimate Radharani, to establish firmly even deeper relationship with Radhika and receive blessings from her, mercy, and from Rupa Manjari to start his morning seva. So this is the opening words, beginning verses of Vilapa Kusumanjali, and it's so much stressed how Raghunath is feeling great, great separation from Radhika. And because Radhika is so merciful and also connected with full love with Manjaris, she cannot resist. But to call her maidservant, yes, please, come. Be with me. I will give you these revelations. So Raghunath here is saying, please revive me. Please revive me from this worldly consciousness, but also please revive me that I can serve you directly. When you revive me, I will be able to serve you. Otherwise, I will die out of separation from you. So he is saying, my wine like body. And here is in the words, is a Kaya Valari. Kaya Valari. So we know that Radharani is very often compared with wine of devotion. And we heard from our Rasik Acharyas that on that wine there is many sprouts, many flowers, many buds. So what does it mean? And they are explaining that all these expansions in the form of goddess of fortunes, expansions in the form of gopis, are coming directly from Radharani. And also when it's said here, Kaya Valari, it means also the Manjaris are also coming, like a buds from the same wine. Because they are all Kaya Vyuha, direct, direct embodiment of Radharani's love, feeling, and all qualities and personality. So he said, my wine like a body. So my body is like original wine, more tender, smaller, younger, but still I'm connected with original wine. I cannot live in separation from the source of my life. So please revive me. because I am burning from separation of you. And we can see here how Gaudiya Vaishnavas actually trying to accept this mood of Viraha, which was so obvious in the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was almost always in the mood of the Viraha Ras. And why it said Viraha Ras? 
<coughs> viraha rasa, because this kind of separation is not like a materialistic se separation. This kind of pain, <clears throat> this kind of lamentations are actually another side of transcendental bliss. But this bliss cannot be experienced in material body. Only in spiritual body. Material body cannot experience it, and even if it experiences, it will burn. So, Bhava Deha Manjari Bhava, this Kaya Valari, this tender, like Vayana body, is so strong because all the Shakti, all the power is coming from the original of wine, and this small, tender, Sweet Manjari Bhat can experience this Radharani separation from Mohan, the separation of both of them, double separation, both of them towards each other, and she can tolerate this bud, tender bud can tolerate the fire of separation, own fire of separation from Swami. So many meanings are present in the words of Acharyas. And we should pray that at least some drops of understanding comes in our consciousness in our heart and pervade our existence so that we can follow their loving emotional examples so ragu here another poet like chak shuji was reading you are my japa you are my Tapa, you are my vrata, you are my meditation, you are everything to me. From another point, words, he's showing the same feeling like Raghunath has. So what we sadhakas, neophyte beginners can do, we should only try to meditate on their feelings and pray to them that their feelings manifest in our hearts. We cannot find this, these feelings in our conditional life. We cannot awoke these spiritual feelings from bodily consciousness of life. We should humbly open our hearts <clears throat> to the hearts and feelings of those who are already on that level. And with great hope and eagerness to receive their mercy in the form of their love for Swami. This mm. is our sadhana. This is our japa. This is our tapa. All other tapas and sadhanas are external if we are not connected deeply with emotions of Rasik Acharyas, which starts with our Gurudev or Guru Majari. We cannot jump over him or her. Um, Garanga, may I? Yeah. Yes, yes, please. Ah, oh, got it. Thank you very much for your words uh, and for your help. Uh, I appreciate it very much. Does that mean that it is impossible? Because I am this body. 
only after I'm passing this body, I'm no longer this body. So it's, it's, it's beautiful to, to connect myself with Gurudev, but it is an impossible approach, or? If you, if we try to approach from our body to his body, don't understanding that he, first of all, he is a spiritual person. He has a spiritual, awakened spiritual identity who is giving us chance to see ourselves like a spiritual identity. No. Then we can make a proper connection. Otherwise, if we stay only on the bodily consciousness of connection, 90% of his feelings we will not understand properly. We will not catch the mood. But if we try, to connect our heart with love, spiritual, from spiritual identity to spiritual identity, then the flow of mercy and the fusion will start to come. Slowly but surely. So for that, it requires to remove bodily consciousness of life. Otherwise, this is a blockage. And of course, in this body, when we awake our spiritual body, then in this body, we can feel it. We don't have to die in the physical sense. And then I will continue in, in my spiritual identity. Now in this Sadakavish, we should receive a mercy because Raghunath here is also in Sadakavish, but he has awakened completely awakened, his Swarup. So we should understand properly that. Rade, Rade, can I ask something? Yes, I don't know who so is here. Our, means our body, this is not only our physical body, means when we die, we still have subtle body. It's not, it's not that when we die that we are just soul, in soul consciousness, we are still having, depends on our consciousness, still having our subtle body, where we are identifying, or what happened when we die, and it happens something, or it can happen something more than in, in still in material body? Yeah, uh, yes, Kalindiji, when we say when we are dying on material, physical platform, it include also, like you said, maybe we can live materialistic physical body, but our subtle body is still going on in another physical body. But when real dying comes, it means that Swarup is completely awakened. This means real dying from physical consciousness and subtle mind, intelligence, and so on. So, pure devotees, they don't identify themselves with this body, physical body, but also, and maybe the most important, more important is that they don't identify themselves with the mind, ego, senses, material emotions, and so on. And they are perfect persons. And in previous page, I don't know, 41, I remember Chakshuji was reading, what is natural for perfect souls is a target for aspirants. They are naturally situated in their Swarup Siddhi, perfection of spiritual identity, naturally. They don't have to put any endeavor for that. They don't have to 
practice sadhana to come and to pray. No. But for us sadhakas, their natural position is our target. So we are practicing bhajana, sadhana, especially manjari bhaswat sadhana, if we want to attain the position of Radharani's maidservant, that this spiritual body of manjari slowly but surely completely condensed, become condensed in our heart and raised up above this materialistic consciousness. So, I, as I remember, maybe Gurudev, please correct me. Many times he said, you know, in this body you have to attain Swarup Siddhi. Because this is the self realization. Self realization means I attain realization, complete realization, full realization of my spiritual identity, Swarup. And I attain loving relationship with my beloved Swami. So Prabhupada said, science of self-realization. One of the first books which he wrote was a science of self-realization. But we, we couldn't catch the point so many years or decades. Please, Gurudev, help us. Yeah. Simon Bhagwan. We don't hear Gurudev. Sorry. We don't hear Gurudev. Radhe? <laughs> yeah, now, yes, Gurudev. Sadhvi, today morning, and Kishori find one very nice thing from Srimad Bhagavad of Prabhupada teaching. And this is a very, my God, Radhe. This is yes. very connected what you are telling in Sriman Bhagavan. No. I like it very much, but Sadhvi will say you and Kishori will say you about that. I will request Sadhvi and Kishori, please come in front, not in the back side, and say, Sadhvi, please, and Kishori, take my One minute, please, five, ten minutes, give back. We yes, have Keep it, I don't need it. She has, you keep. Ah. Radhe Radhe, by the mercy of Guru Dev, saying that he can find more loud and more slow. Today we were reading in the preface space and the introduction of Sri Mad Bhagavatam. And this point is what you are explaining so sweetly. Sri Mad Bhagavatam is the transcendental science not only for knowing the ultimate source of everything but also for knowing our relation with him and our duty towards perfection of the human society on the basis of this perfect knowledge. What is the meaning? 
Well, I don't need to. Buddha Dave is asking, what is the meaning? What is the knowledge and what is the science? What does the knowledge, what is the knowledge and what is the science? He was explaining that the science is diving. Read again the line. <laughs> Srimad Bhagavatam is the transcendental science, not only for knowing the ultimate source of everything, but also for knowing our relation with him and our duty towards perfection of the human society on the basis of this perfect knowledge. So knowledge, knowledge is all the factual information we can have about the whole world. But science, is the realization of where this knowledge comes from, how it relates between those who know and God, and what its final purpose is. That is science. Read again, please. <laughs> <laughs> Srimad Bhagavatam is the transcendental science, not only for knowing the ultimate source of everything, but also for knowing our relation with Him and our duty towards perfection of the human society on the basis of this perfect knowledge. So many times. I remember Gurudev was teaching us, okay, now you know the God. You know so many things about him. But the next step is, now I want to love him. Mm -hmm. And how I can love him if I establish a relationship. Love without relationship, deep, strong relationship is not possible. But to establish a loving relationship is about knowledge and this is the duty of human society. Mm -hmm. This is eternal dharma. <laughs> this is jaiva dharma. This is science. And this is the sublime science this is the sublime science in which relationship between Radha and Krishna is the most sublime and hidden science. But <laughs> even above that is one more science, loving relationship between Manjaris and embodiment of love, Jai Shri Radhe. Radha Takurani, Mahabhava Swarupini Radha Takurani. This is the science above all science of relationship. Because the intensity of love cannot compare with no other relationship. 
And this is the most sublime, most greatest, I don't know how to explain my English is very broken, science. I hope so. Okay. Yeah. To become a God-realized soul? Yeah. Continuing the same page a little bit later. Loud. So that one is sure to become a God-realized soul at the end of finishing the first nine cantos. You repeat, Sadvi. Loud. Uh, it's not question of loud, Gurudev. It's so much uh, distortion, but mm. slowly, yeah. This. Yes, this is a better. So that one is sure to become a God realized soul at the end of finishing the first nine cantos. Ataiva Bhagavate Tinakaya Sambada Bideya Prayojan Maya. Chaitin Mahaprabhu is saying that only three subjects are present in Bhagavatam Sambada, how to establish relationship, Abideya, what to do in that relationship, to serve with full love. And Prayojan, ultimately, to attain that God. <laughs> all yeah. other things, all other things are Maya. Jai Ho. Mm. And we can see everyone who was reading the Srimad Bhagavatam. Yeah. He can see that every person who is mentioning the Srimad Bhagavatam, every person has his own specific Sambada relationship with Krishna, with one form of Krishna. And this is the teaching of Srimad Bhagavatam for us sadaka, but we are so foolish that we don't understand. That each of these devotees, he had a loving relationship with Krishna, and we sadakas finally have to ask ourselves, what is my relationship? Yeah. Bhishma has specific relationship with Krishna. Kunti has specific relationship with Krishna. Prahlad has specific re relationship with Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yeah. Dhruva, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. Ramak, uh, yeah. this um, Kanuman has specific. So it means that we should ask ourselves, this is my duty. They are already master in the science of relationships. But where is my position? And finally, Tan Kanto is coming to give us opportunity. There is one more secret mm. level. Vraja. Uh, uh, okay, I will jump over Dvaraka, but Vraja. <laughs> Vraja is the most exalted science of relationship because there is a natural, completely natural love present there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, asking this question, what is my relation? What is the difference between asking it from my body and asking it from my soul? Body, you have to ask yourself from body because we are still on the bodily consciousness. But because of the knowledge, we understand that we have to ask this question. We understood I am the soul. And there is a super soul. So the question is, do I want 
to merge in the super soul or I want loving devotional relationship with super soul, with the God in my heart. From bodily consciousness, but this kind of consciousness is a God-given intelligence to ask such kind of question. It's not materialistic question. Sanatana Goswami was uh, when he approached Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he asked, Kami, who am I? I don't know. I'm confused. I don't know who am I. He was asking this question from his bodily, from body. Who am I? Why I am suffering? This is an intelligent question. All other questions are not important. And how to come out from this position? Who am I? So this is from the body. And this is why we are learning that first we should understand that we are not this body, that we are spirit soul. Someone who cannot accept that he is spirit soul, he cannot even from body ask such kind of question. But this is not the end, it's just the beginning of the science of relationship. Beautiful, beautiful. One more she wants to Page one of the introduction. The conception of God and the conception of absolute truth are not on the same level. Wow. Again, repeat. The conception no. of God and the conception of absolute truth are not on the same level. The Srimad Bhagavatam hits on the target of the absolute truth. The conception of God indicates the controller, whereas the conception of the absolute truth indicates the summon bonum or the ultimate source of all energies. There is no difference of opinion about the personal feature of God as the controller because a controller cannot be impersonal. So does it mean actually this is a two conception, personal conception and impersonal conception. When we are fixed on God, we are fixed on person. But when we are fixed on absolute truth, all pervading absolute truth, it's impersonal way because we cannot make relationship with absolute truth. We can make relationship with the God, with the person. I'm asking you, is it my correct or? No? Again, listen. Read again. The conception of God and the conception 
of absolute truth are not on the same level. Ah, same level. There are two. Maybe one is higher, one is lower. Go on. The Srimad Bhagavatam hits on the target of the absolute truth. The conception of God indicates the controller, whereas the conception of the absolute truth indicates the summoned bonum of the ultimate source of all energies. There is no difference of opinion about the personal feature of God as the controller because a controller cannot be impersonal. Absolute truth refers to Brahman. Brahman aspect of God and the controller God refers to Bhagavan, the personality of Godhead. So I think it's like you said, Garanga Maya. But what's very important in the verse or in the comment is he says Srimad Bhagavatam stops at Brahman, at the impersonal, and that we need to go higher. Remember we read in uh, Vilapakusmanjari Gurudev, was it verse 89 about if you only want Gopi Bhav, then you read Bhagavatam. But if you want to go to Manjari Bhav and beyond, then you need to then then you need to go to Braj. I think that's what he's saying here. But second line, what is the read again? Personal truth. Sir. The Srimad Bhagavatam hits on the target of the absolute truth. Mm. Impersonal. No, no. Listen. Mm. The conception of God indicates the controller, whereas the conception of the absolute truth indicates the summon bonum or the ultimate source of all energies. All energies. Bonum. Bonum means? Good. All things good. All <coughs> things best. Bonum. And that is personal energy. Hmm. Yeah. Now I understand. Understand? Yes. You see, again the... Yes, yes. From the point of controller and from the point of the summon bone. All energies. This is one energy of controlling, Prabhupada is saying. In uh, but Samam Bonum is Swarup Shakti. Yeah, that's oh, the point. Oh, this is the Prabhupada uh, Marsi. I need to understand without Vilap Kusumanya. Yes. So it's I see. Huh? It's not possible without Vilapa. Read again. Now it will be clear. Go on. The conception of God and the conception of absolute truth are not on the same level. No same level. Which is higher? The higher is your goal. What is your goal that will be higher? <laughs> 
Somebody has a God goal, the God is higher. Somebody has an energy goal, the energy is higher. Like a Mahaprabhu. Radhika is higher and Krishna is learning from Radhika. He is, he is a puppet, he wants to dance how the Radhika say. So he is not in one level. Dif different level as per your relation it moves. You make higher because of your relation. This is the beauty of all relationship. Everyone in his own relationship, he thinks this is he is the best, he is the highest. And this is the science of Rasa. <laughs> Go on. The Srimad Bhagavatam hits on the target of the Absolute Truth. Hit of the target of Absolute Truth. In a hidden way, though. I don't know what is the meaning of hit the target of Absolute Truth. <laughs> what is the meaning, Udham? It means that uh, the, the, the purpose of Bhagavatam is to explain Absolute Truth. That's the point. Bhakti. But no, I, I think I think he's saying that Manjuri Bhav Chaitanya Mahaprabhu takes us higher. That is that is one thing. But his target, Bhakti. Manjuri Bhav will come when Bhakti is not there, Manjuri Bhav will not come. Right. So basically to prepare, here is the Gopi Bhav bringing to this. So he is the target of the energy. This is the target to develop our devotion, to reach to the Gopi Bhav. Mm. Uh, and this person is not impersonal, he is a personal. Controller is not impersonal. And if you have a not relation with a, a energy, then you have to search in person. <laughs> the controller relation. Call this man. Ah, yeah, call this man. Yeah. If you have no relation with the energy, you have to. Wait to the controller. Then first step and then second step will come. First you have to assign them. No. If you have one of right is spiritual master, then you no need to you can jump for second step. Ultimate goal. Yeah. Read. Again, complete The conception of God indicates the controller, whereas the conception of the absolute truth indicates the summum bonum or the bonum is what is bonum it means the sum of the totality of everything some means some bonum means good so sum of all good things it's also essence of everything yeah. Wow. 
Whereas the conception of the absolute truth indicates the summon bonum or the ultimate source of all energies. Wow. Ilya? Yes. <laughs> Prabhupada merciful. Gurudev, but we need someone who really can explain to us who is self-realized. Otherwise, confusion. Kisori Maya said to now she want to research and this and we are sitting three and we are in the Kisori Maya and Sadhvi inspired me. Oh, nice. And I will put you in in this your meeting. You inspire us. Yeah, Guru Deva inspire. Guru, from Guru Deva everything come. Mm -hmm. Thank you to be his instrument. <laughs> Thank you so much, Guru Deva. Very beautiful. Go on, Swami. I interrupt you. He, in the, even the Srimad Bhagavad is mentioned. Yes. In the beginning, is the knowledge and science is mentioned. Yes. In the beginning, science is also made, Bhagavad Gita mentioned relation, love, and after that, Sarup and Sarup Siddhi. This is the one way and other way also mentioned after that. You see the difference way. <laughs> Who want to go in science, they have this way. Who want to go for knowledge, different way. Radhe. How am I spending the day having such great teachers? Some of this eagerness and enthusiasm will appear in the lives of those who naturally perform their bhajan. How much Sri Raguna Das is lamenting? It is as if his heart is breaking. Suddenly, like a lightning strike, a new spiritual vision comes to him. He sees that Shyam is decorating Swamini while she Rupa Mandri holds the dressing paraphernalia in her hand. Shyam paints pictures of Makari fishes on Radhika's cheeks. But it doesn't work so well because his hands are shivering of loving ecstasy. Seeing how Shyam is absorbed in decorating her, Swamini softly smiles. That smile is like nectar. What if it will fall off? Krishna won't allow it to fall, so he catches it with the cups 
off his lips by kissing her. Swamini casts a restless glance on Shyam's face and enchants him completely with this. Sri Raguna Das is absorbed in relishing this nectarian pastime in his Siddha Swarup. Seeing Shyam's incompetence, Swamini looks towards Tulasi, hinting at her that she should take Shyam's job over. Tulasi's heart is filled with bliss when she gets this order. But when she gets up, the vision disappears and Sri Raghunath Das returning to his external absorption falls on the bank of Radhakund, crying and lamenting. Burning with endless feelings of separation, he considers Radakun to be just like the gapping mouth of a tiger. Out of separation from my heart's beloved, It seems to me that the great fields of Raj are completely empty. Govardhan Hill has become like a python and Radhakund has become like the gapping mouth of a tiger. These divine playgrounds are so much reminding a loving devotee of his beloved deities while he is deprived of their personal service and association that the mere sight of them gives him great pain of separation. Sri Raghunath weeps and prays. Shivaya Kshana Nirikshanamritai. Remembering the ever so sweet merciful glances that Swamini casts on him or her when she orders him or her to perform such sweet services. These glances are Amrita, A like not and Mrita like death. And they are the only medicine that can revive him. So he anxiously prays, please cast just one merciful glance on this fallen maidservant. So here is mentioned this word Amrita, the nectar. And it's written, are ah, not Amrita that. It means that everyone who is relishing this nectar of loving pastimes will attain immortality. But this is not the main goal. 
to attain immortality. This is the side effect of desire to establish loving relationship with beloved Ishtadev and be engaged in direct service of that Ishtadev. Then like result, like a secondary symptom, immortality comes. But if we have immortality like a goal, then we will miss, miss the point of devotional service. And we can find ourselves deep in the ocean of moksha, liberation. Because desire focused on immortality brings person to one kind of liberation. But here we are talking about nectar ocean of bhakti ras. Bhakti rasa amrita sindhu. Devotees, it's not karmis, it's not jnanis, it's not yogis, but only devotees are thirsting to dive deep in this sindhu of bhakti ras Amrit. In Srimad Bhagavatam, now we are talking about Srimad many demigodes and um, demons were fighting for this Amrita. Because they want to attain immortality. So, demons and demigods in that way are on the same level. And they will attain liberation, one form of liberation. But devotees have a fear of this kind of immortality. They want to dive in bhakti, Ras Amrita Sindhu. So this ocean of devotion is the only goal. I just want to say about this. Because it's Sri mentioned Shanti. here in the commentary, and maybe someone can think, oh, there, yes, this is the goal. It comes automatically. When someone attains Swarup Siddhi, it's including this kind of immortality, this kind of Amrita. It's including, you, you don't have to make special special endeavor for that. Because this benediction is including in attaining Swarup Siddhi. But this is not the goal. It's just a side effect. And the more of that, devotees are actually not interesting about this. Right. Sri Rasika Chandra Das sings, Listen, O Goddess, to my request. I am your maidservant, dedicated to your lotus feet for long. My body burns in the fire of separation from you, like a vine in the forest fire. Your momentary glance is like a stream of nectar. 
And I only want one drop of that. Please give it to me and thus save your Dasi's life. I have no other shelter but you. This is the end of the purport of the verse 10. Do you want to share something? Because you were studying this verse very profoundly. You wanted to share something? No, you say so many things. So. <laughs> May I try? I like this prayer so deeply, only to be on your knees and and to pray, and it's 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 a huge prayer. It's a huge prayer for receiving. For that's why many spends this drop of nectar, and. And perhaps we are allowed to pray this. We are invited to pray for this. And perhaps this, this is a chance of our life. This is a mean, meaning of our life. But it's a question of praying. Humble, devoted. And I only have to, yes, perhaps to clean my heart. And to, to be conscious about these spiritual realm, to try, dive in, to connect, try to connect myself, and then only to pray for this. I, I read it again because it's so beautiful. Your momentary glance, your momentary glance is like a stream of nectar. And I only want one drop of that. What a huge prayer. Please give it to me. And thus save your nurse's life. I have no other shelter but you. Yeah, this is the perfection of prayer. And we should learn how to pray from our examples. Because he said, I only want, I don't, I don't want anything else. I only want one drop. I have no other shelter than you. So this is the prayer. If we pray, but we have so many other conceptions, it's okay, it's very good. But also we should follow the way of praying of our Acharyas. With, how, with which kind of feelings they are praying, because their prayer is natural, and this is our target. And how we know that their prayer is natural? Because it's full of, like you said, humbleness, eagerness, and full of tears. If these symptoms appear in our heart, then our prayer will attract even more. Radharani's Kripa. But if we just pray and pray and pray and pray, we can continue like this many lifetimes. If we don't put our feelings, proper feelings, in these words, 
And Baba somewhere said, yeah, I know so many things, but my words are empty. In other sense, there is no feeling, proper feeling. So it's very nice that you mentioned here that we should pray. But the point is, without any other hidden motives. Then prayer is a pure, but also Radharani is hearing the other kinds of prayers. Giving who, us... Mm -hmm. who, who is praying? My soul or my body? Soul is praying. If we cry from the soul, this is one kind of tears. If we cry from the body, it's another kind of tears. Atma Krandana. Crying from the soul brings person to real prayer. And usually, crying and prayer from the body only is for my bodily benefit. Different kinds. Health, money, position, I don't know, you know, for the others. But if it comes from the soul, then these kind of tears are watering the words of our prayers. And it should be received from someone who is already praying from Atma Kranda, like Atma Kranda, from the soul. Otherwise, if we just like you said, praying from the body, it's a religious prayer. It's not devotional prayer. But to receive devotion, we need to cry, to pray, to be eager, to be humble from our real existence. Soul consciousness. Just want to say this. And then this kind of devotee is saying momentary. Please glance, put your glance on me. This is Premika devotee. Because he already has Establish relationship with Swami. If we pray like this from bodily consciousness of life, then we are ordering Swamani. Momentary. Give me your glance. This is order. But this is not devotion. And Raghunadas Goswami, in the end of the Vilapa, maybe you read, or I don't know who read it, is praying to Radharani. But in one moment he is saying, if you think that I don't deserve it, if you think that I'm not too qualified, if it's too much disturb you, then forget it. My prayers. This is not religious and bodily prayer. This is the prayer of someone who already attained his Swarup. And this is our target. This is our target that we deeply, emotionally meditate on his or her kind of prayers.
and to feel these kind of prayers. And this is the science. It's not going mechanically. It's going through deep core of the heart. And this is not the whiff of bodily consciousness of life. So this is our sadhana, to make endeavor to feel the feelings of acharyas, to learn how to think, how they are thinking, and how to serve them. Then infusion automatically goes. I said, watch what I said. I said what I practice. If I'm wrong, please don't listen to me. Radhe. Radhe. Oh, yes. So my prayer is when the day will come, I can pray from my soul, from my heart, and not from my body. I totally agree with you, Kalinich. I cry because I cannot cry. Mm. <laughs> I cry because I want to cry. Not because this is my crying for Swamini. No, I'm crying because I cannot cry. Yes. Purely. <laughs> like you said. I pray that I really pray. That's the point. And this is Dasa, Anudas, Anudas, Anudas. Thank you, Kalindiji.